what is it people how's it going this is Bharat and welcome back to yet another video so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to integrate your firestore or your firebase with your kiwi application so the whole agenda for this video is to set up a firebase application and use a kiwi application to send and receive data this is going to be a two-part video in the first part i'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your firebase and make that first patch request so that's what you're going to be doing let's get this video started all right so as usual i say that you're going to have two things installed in your system one thing is going to be obviously your uh, uh, Kiwi, uh, which is going to be definitely installed. And apart from that, we don't need much, nothing much uh, for this application to work. Let's go and start writing the first application. I'm going to be using the Kiwi, obviously. I don't want to go over all the basics of how to set up a Kiwi and all of those sorts. That comes as part of the uh, basic uh, Kiwi tutorial that is again coming up in the description. Check that out if you are, if you are interested. Now, let's go and start writing the code. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is uh, making sure that this is bigger enough for you guys to read it. All right, so this is going to be the from kiwi dot app will import the uh, app and followed by that i would need maybe a box layout uh, so that i can have my buttons inside the box layout all right so this is the best stuff that i need i'll go ahead and start writing my kiwi app and import the app probably and to create my build method all right so this is going to be the build method and what i'm going to be doing is as part of this build method return for now and also now in the main i'm going to be saying uh kiwi app of run all right so this is a template that we usually do and i require that you guys also create this uh, template and followed by this inside this i'm going to be creating a very simple box layout so i'm just going to be saying box layout is equal to box layout off and uh, let's try create a very simple button here so you will need from kiwi dot uix dot button we will need a button class all right so the button is created here and what i'm going to be doing is inside this button i'm also going to be creating an object for this button and this button is going to have text of uh, create patch this is going to be the button that's going to be present let's add it to the box layout and uh, button and you'll return the box layout so Alright, so this is going to be the entire thing that's going to be using we're going to be using this for the entire application this is going to be the simple patch button and the need for this patch button is to test if our firebase application is working all right so now time to go ahead and launch your google chrome this is going to be where you're going to be using our google chrome to create and do all of those sorts let's go to firebase if you just do firebase.com it will open it for you here i already have my account open here so i expect that you go ahead and create your own firebase account let's go to console and start working on our first thing let's do add project and we will inside do something like this kiwi project or uh, we can say kiwi uh, crud project maybe so crud stands for create i talked about that in the last video so you're going to be using the crud operations the four operations that are possible so just go ahead and continue this it will take some time to create the entire thing and we will wait for that to complete but in the meantime let's run our application here to see how our uh, this entire application is looking like so all right so i threw the application and it's opening up an entire button which is fine that's what i need just need the patch to work so when the button is clicked i need something to call right i need some method to be called so what do you do you just create your own bind method so i'll just say on ta on uh create patch so this is going to be the method i'll just do self args here mandatory and inside this i'll just print like a button click for now so inside this method we will be firing up the firebase uh, patch method also now let's quickly go ahead and start using our bind method to fire the on press so just do bind on press will be you just have to fire this uh, create patch basically right uh, this is not going to be method this is going to be the method this is going to be the function uh, reference all right so this is going to be this is done let's go and check if this is completed so it's taking some time to load the google analytics it's definitely going to take some time uh, we will just go and quickly check if this is also working fine should be working fine right not big thing all right so let's check our button here all right it's printing fine and so our on press is clicked and this button is also working fine now all we need to do is quickly uh, work out our uh, this project right here hoping that this gets completed in some time let's wait for it to complete and i'll come back and continue guys 
just make sure you you guys also do that awesome guys so the application or the firebase is completed we'll just go ahead and start continuing inside and once you're inside you'll be taken to this console which is look something like this i've named it as kiwi crud project so what you need to do is go to your real-time database and not your firestore database go to your real-time database and click on it and it'll create our database from scratch so this is how the entire application or the this is how the screen will look like when you do it for the first time so go and create a database the important thing to know here is that as you go here you start in your locked mode and if you want to start in test mode that's fine but as you can see that it says how you must update your security security rules within 30 days to enable long term client read and write so i'll tell you what is the difference between the locked mode and the test mode here so the locked mode make sure that unless you have some kind of a uh, authenticated communication between your application which is our kiwi application and the firestore database uh, you will not be able to read and write data from the fire, uh, database in your test mode anybody can write and read data but it is only for a locked type of uh, time and also locked uh, clients so this is the two different ways where you can use to create and write database i'll start this entire thing in locked mode right away so locked mode means that you cannot read you cannot write unless we change the rules which i'll talk about right now once this is completed all right so this database is completed as you can see that it is given as a very simple url wherein we can make a rest call and we are done with that basically if you make a rest call to post some data it's going to post some data if you make a rest call to get data it will read the data from that so that's the whole idea behind this entire url so we'll be using this url extensively right now let's go and first copy this url go back to our kiwi application and i'm going to be calling this as my uh, i'll call this as basically uh, firebase url right this is going to be the firebase url where you want to always make request all right so this is easy now but one simple thing that you want to do is at the end of this slash which is the uh, final uh, final uh, splitter you just do dot json when you do dot json you are saying that i'm going to be making a request in a json format to uh, post put or uh, delete data and uh, you can consider this entire url to be like a rest url making meaning that you can make it like a url kind of a communication between our kiwi application and our firestore application and you'll be able to read and write data so that's the only change that you need to do just go back here and as you can see here that we have some nothing here right away inside this uh, this basically this db this is going to be db that's going to be created on its own you cannot control the db name and anything of that sort now go back to the rules page here or the rules section here and inside that it's obviously available that the read and write is actually not available nobody can do that it's in a locked mode just change it to true in both these places just change it to true and we we'll just publish this and it's going to give us a warning saying that you if you modify anybody from the outside world whoever has this url will be able to read and write data to your database and if you want to do that you can go ahead and do that now what i'm going to be doing is that once this entire thing is completed i'm going to be del deleting this database primarily because i don't want people to start writing to this database and this firebase is going to bill me in the end of the month which i don't want i have already half few applications that are being built for and i don't want this to be built so i'm going to be deleting it so do not try to do or maybe use this url all right cool let's go back to the data section here and obviously this error is going to be continuously thrown wherever you go if you want to dismiss it you can dismiss it and uh, let's go and start working on the basic stuff that you need to make this database work so go back to your application here we already have a print a button clicked which is going to be the callback that is going to be fired when the button is clicked let's go and import our first simple internal uh, library called as request now requests are basically used for making rest calls meaning that you want to do a rest type of a url call which is going to make the basic four important uh, parameters or basic functions one is going to be the post call meaning that you want to post some data second is the put call where you're going to be putting some data meaning that anything that is already present is going to be replaced by whatever you're going to be putting or, or you will always be putting on top of these things only the third is going to be the delete call wherein you can delete whatever uh, node you want to delete and the fourth is the get call where you can actually get data from the database fifth one is just a patch call which is also available as part of request where you can just patch some data to already available url all right so this is going to be rest uh, request which is going to be the package that you're going to be using i'm also going to use the import json so that i'm always going to be posting json data only let's go here and inside our button click method i'm going to be creating a very simple dict call this i'll call this as basically dictionary or i'll just call this as a json data or patch data whatever you want to call it as and we'll go here and you would say uh we'll just say this 
we'll create a simple like this so you need to have it as a string and what you need to do is or you can just directly do it as a json also i'll just call this as url and i'll just say um google.com or something like that this is going to be my first one and in the second one i'm going to say uh, i'll just probably um, i don't know age and i'll say it's probably a 15 or 15 years old this is going to be all of this a text or string here in this example so what we need to do is just directly do a simple request call we'll just say request dot patch so patch is the available uh, method that comes as part of the request and you're going to be using this url right here so this is going to be url that you're going to be using so we need to say url is equal to self.firebase url and the next one is going to be the json data that we need to pass right you need to pass the json data i'll just say json data or else what would usually happen is that we will be having this entire thing in the form of a string like this we'll be having this entire thing in, in the form of a string and what you can do is that if you're getting it from some other location it will always be a string you just do json.loads and it'll pass this json data meaning that when you're converting your string to json this entire request has to have this data in the form of json only now we have made a patch request we can now just say response is equal to this request patch just confirm that the rex, uh, response is actually a 200 meaning that this is successfully placed now let's go here and run this kiwi application and we'll just run this again and we'll just go and use this application right away and we'll see if this patch is working fine all right the so button is clicked and the response is also 200 meaning that the request is successfully placed now we'll go back to our uh, kiwi application and as you can see that this kiwi.crud or this database now has two two data which is one is 15 years old it's going to be the uh, age and the url is going to be the google.com awesome right now let's go and now do something some something different here let's say amazon.com and uh, probably you'll say the age is going to be um 17 years old something like that you'll see how the patch works here now run it again new data so restart your application let's use this application and we'll just say button clicked response is 200 awesome let's go here and see if you see here this that old data is now gone it has been replaced by our new data that's the property of patch request if you want to post the data meaning that you want to save data every single time you got to be using the post data and similarly you can delete and you can get data and all of those sorts that's it for this video and in the next video i'm going to be teaching you guys how to use the post delete and the get request the data that's going to be part of this entire kiwi uh, and firebase integration let me meet you guys there until then bharat peace out have a super awesome day